where we're going to be talking about how to uh, how to uh, collect data from a simulation. But first, we're going to see how we can set it up for a simulation, and then uh, we can see how we can collect it. So first things first. So we go. So the first thing is you need to know what kind of data that you want to collect. So in our case, we're sending a bunch of messages. So we want to know how many messages we're sending. So we want to simulate over a certain time and then see oh, how many messages did I send. So here are the places where you would need to modify your code in order to incorporate such a thing. So first, in your handler, you need to define two things, which is the number of messages that you're going to be sending, and also the sim signal, which is a signal variable. So what's the signal variable? Signal variable is something that you meet, that you meet, and then the signal would count how many times you emit and the values that you emitted and then give you the data back. Record it and give it back. So once you've done this, there are a couple of things that you have to do simultaneously. So one so you would have to go into your net file and define a record variable. So in this case, I would I chose to give it exactly the same name as those as my simulation variable. But you would have to go into you would have to define the signal, the type, and also this record variable. This can record vectors and count. And then next thing you have to do is you remember we connect how, how we connected the capacitor value from the NAND file to the C++ file and this there's also another function that was an R and this one is register signal that would connect the record variable to the known messages so we can record it this way but now we've recorded it this way you want to first you want to get each message that's being sent so here there are, there are four messages that have been sent and you don't want to miss that so you say all right none messages which has been by the way initialized to zero at first would count would increment every time a message is scheduled and you would emit you would emit that number every time so what the meeting does is it emits your message it emits your signal with the value that you're sending so and also in here in the humble message so, so since you're creating a new message or you're sending a new message every time you're receiving the message you would need to increment your number of messages and then read it from there as well. So, after writing all this code, there's one more thing that you have to do. You have to go here and then you can set up your own. But this is optional, but you can set it up so that it would record the vector and the histogram of the scale. So, we'll see how that's different in the future. But then you would set the check signals true so that it would check for your signals. Don't forget. Next, what do you do? You build your network, of course. We're talking about change, you would have to build it. And then once your build finishes, you would have to uh, reconfigure your one. So this one, I am running it as a CMD file, because if I run it as a CMD, as I told you before, it would take time to run. So I just wanted to run, I'm not really concerned. I didn't really want to see the visual effect. So and also I'm making it to one uh, microsecond, because if I made it to one millisecond, which, which it was, it would take a really long time, because there's a lot of latency in the network. So it would be a lot of data, a lot of numbers, which we don't really want. So we just want to run for a really small time and then see. So instead of you know, Let's make it 10, okay? And 10 per second is pretty small, so let's do that. And then let's run it. So now, it's running, as you can see. Uh, so this one should take about a minute. Or, of course, it's almost actually finished. So we got to 75%, 80%. And then, so I'm looking at it from here. So while I run it, so let's go over it again. So don't forget the four things that you have to do first, and make sure they are declared. And also initialize your camera. There can also be other things that you get your summary. But then also you need to define it in your net file. And you need to find a record file. And you need to connect it. 
feel after you connect it and you wish after one, you have to send it every time you want to record it. Okay. So when I was up 90%, which is taking a while, it's more than I thought. So this is how data is also going to be asking. So where would you find that data? It's one of the good questions. So you would find the data in the results section. So once it's done, you can scan two types of files. They got these yeah. vector with two types of files. Together. And then you have the that schedule bar. So since this is taking more than I expected it to, here's what we're going to do. We're going to delete the VL we has created. And then we're going to configure a new one. And instead of two seconds, we will just make it two microseconds. I should not take more than three. So next, what you would need is you would need to create an analysis file. So your analysis file would be something like this, and this analysis file you would say, okay, this file should be already selected. And then I would drag the scalar here in the vector file. And here from input, I go to browse data. And now, as you can see, I have vectors, which is 4.5. The, the count of 88 messages that were sent to it this time. I have 28 types of uh, data, which is the count, the maximum. By the way, the maximum should be 88 because remember, our count, uh, our uh, the thing we were sending was a counter, so the maximum value that it sends is the actual number of messages that were sent out. So you have 88 here, and then also the histograms, uh, there are different variables. So if I wanted to plot it, I would just uh, click on plot, and these are the 88s. But also, if I wanted to plot just the maximum, I would simply select it. And then, uh, oh, by the way, I can go to the scale here and look at the, all the networks that I have. Since I only have four computers in my network, I would just do that and then plot it. And there you are. So what, what is the other thing that you got here? You can do vector or scale, right? And once you do this, you can actually export it into a CSV file, a Python source file, or anything you like. You can also copy and paste that and plot it as you want. So this is a way you would do a typical data collection. And there are a bunch of ways to see the symbols. Now, you have uh, my handler, which is one of them, as sending a lot more than the other, in this case. So a lot more of the uh, this is a uh, this is one sample one example on which you can an example on which you can collect data. Right? Thank you very much. And uh, this is going to conclude my series of five uh, tutorial videos. Uh, if you'd like to get uh, if you'd like to read the um, guide, which is a starter a guide for starters, uh, you can find it on GitHub. Uh, the link is also available below this video. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video.